We have those two things. They don't look at the other things communities have, which they have community centers, they have community pools, they have uh, really well-maintained recreational facilities. We don't have any of that. Okay? And, and that's what disturbs me, and I've watched it for 40 years here in this community, and it can be so much better with all the resources we do have. Now, the Republican Party is committed to starting right away to do it. Right away. We know how to do it. We've offered the solutions. We told you what we would do. Freezing taxes on the elderly. Michael doesn't even understand what I'm talking about. He's clueless to what I'm talking uh, can, about. Can I ask you about that one? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that's very important, and I've tried to make that point as well. And that is that the elderly pay a lot of taxes, but they really put very few demands on our social services. And if we tax them out of this area, then basically they're going to go someplace else. But every dollar in taxes they pay is a net surplus to the town. And if they leave, and if somebody moves in, and let's say that family that moves into that house that they evacuate has three or four children, and we're going to be uh, paying $12,000 per year for each of these children, Absolutely. then people say, well, no, if you freeze taxes for the, uh, for the seniors, that you're going to lose money. But I think it would be just the opposite. Uh, just the opposite. Matter of fact, uh, tonight I was listening to them talk about the fact that we have a very healthy community because we have all these single-family homes going up okay, with kids. That's not a healthy community to me. There's, it's, there's no balance. Well, again, we got to remember the mathematics here. And they, they alluded to it, but they didn't really want to admit to it. We pick up two or $3,000 in taxes on the home, and we shell out $12,000 for every kid that lives in that home. It, That's a net loss to us of eight to $9,000. In, incidentally, I understand that most of the surrounding communities do exactly the opposite. They understand what you're talking about. Yes. And there's a new parcel which is open for development. In many cases, those parcels are for seniors only. Absolutely. They, you know, we have, a, we have a lot of low-income housing here. We, yes, affordable housing, we do need it, but it has to be zoned properly, and you have to have a balance. They have no clue about it. They just, they're just happy anything comes to them because they don't have a plan. They really don't know what they're doing. So it's, it's just, I think the part that's discouraging and the part that I'm really, I'm insulted, I'm literally insulted, or a person with medium intelligence, when I look at their campaign and their platform, when they talk about that, their, that Michael Paulus is results oriented. I have not seen any results. He talks about his leadership. I have not seen any leadership. And he talks about he wants to continue our economic expansion, and I do not see any economic expansion. So I'm insulted by his platform to try to pull the wool over the eyes of people who are going to believe that. And the voters most likely will, you know, as they, as they look at this, People don't want to get into the details, either they're too lazy, they're too busy, whatever it may be, but they're going to see the results of their vote if they vote for them, and they're going to see it in terms of higher taxes and a more deterioration of our infrastructure, because these guys truly are clueless. I, and I'm going to end this up, I'm going to give an example of what's really clueless. This is the second time we try to put lights on Main Street. Second time. And they still can't get it right. This is lights. It's not very difficult, folks, to go down at night and say, it's bright enough, it's not bright enough. That's not complex. Okay? That doesn't take a master's degree in political science, it doesn't take anything. It just takes opening your eyes and putting a little common sense here. They don't have it. And this is what you vote for when you vote for that party. So we're looking for people to vote for the Republican Party and finally change it. And go against the Chronicle once in a while. The Chronicle is a, is a yellow rag that has done more disservice to this town over the years with their endorsement of the Democratic Party. Than I, anybody, if I were to blame one specific reason for the deterioration of this town, I will point it right at the Willimantic Chronicle, because I remember for 40 years, they endorsed every Democratic candidate. And these are the ones who have been in power for 40 years, and they, you've seen the results of their uh, administrations over these years. Okay, uh, you say you're about uh, to wind this up. Let me ask you one more thing, because I think it's very important. First of all, you have a, a degree in engineering, and I recall I went to UConn back in the, uh, where I'm going to tell you how long ago, but a very long time ago, and I recall that uh, basically the School of Engineering was almost a screening program for everybody. And everybody that flunked out, which was probably about four out of five, and they then went to liberal arts. Uh, so you are an engineer from I'm UConn. I'm an engineer and I have a master's in business. Yes, okay. I think those are very good. And, uh, you know, I'm much entrepreneurial and I don't have time to waste with the nuances of political correctness. This town needs work now, and we can't listen to a mic with his suit and his tie. Unfortunately, I'm wearing one tonight because it's our last show that we're going to have here. Um, but we have to go start working day one. Elect me and my party, and I'm telling you, we will be working from day one, and you'll see so, such, uh, such a drastic change for the good in this town within two years. You don't believe it. We're also for the town manager, and my goal is to move myself right out of this job by bringing in the town manager. Well, I got to say one thing, and uh, this is my personal observations, I think that's probably one of the reasons that you were selected again to run, 
as candidate for first elect. And that is you are definitely a dedicated man. You've got a good heart. Some people think that you're a little hard on them, but I think basically you tell it like it is. You have a good heart. You're concerned about the kids. You're concerned about the town. And you've been concerned about that for a very long period of time. You don't want to be a professional politician. You just want to see this town change for the better. And I have to congratulate you for everything you've attempted to do. And I wish you a lot of luck in this campaign. Thank you, Bob.